Right, it, have you ever heard the term basically two step forwards and one backwards? Well, this time Galgen Entertainment has decided to take a leap backwards with War Thunder's development. They are proposing a bunch of changes to earnings in premium vehicles, as well as a new formula for calculating activity and battle activity. Also, there's a couple of other changes as well. The only positive here is there are rewards for useful actions in aviation simulator battles mode. And that's essentially it. All we have is a complete and a crazy sort of way of dealing with things. To get like the Sagittario 2, well, its current battle rating was increased from 8.0 to 8.3. Then they removed the belts. So they removed all the specialist belts you could get on the thing. Still performed pretty well. Well, now what stock repair cost obviously was about 4,400 is now going up to none other than the absurd cost of 33,390 silver lions. And that is stock. And if we do the math, estimated it's probably going to be around 44,000 in order to uh, fully repair uh, this particular vehicle. Now, there are some other changes as well in, in regards to how things work. Uh, the A few vehicles are being moved up. The M748A, uh, also known as Herman the German Sherman, is being moved from rank 2 to rank 3. The gun carrier has been moved before the Achilles, and several other smaller changes. The LA-15 and the LA-200 are now switching places, which is a strange move, but the LA-200 is a lower battle rating than the LA-15, and the LA-15 uh, is before it. MiG-17 is going down to rank 5, and that's okay. But essentially, what we have is a catalyst for... Uh, just utter devastation. Let me explain here. The changes to premium vehicles is essentially a change which will reduce effectiveness of earning of civil lines and re research points, which again will lead to a change in the effectiveness of vehicles going upwards of any sort of tier. So combine this with the fact that they are basically telling us that the game is constantly changing and affects vehicles in various ways, which leads to their effectiveness and reaction to these changes. Essentially, they have adjusted the economic parameters of the vehicles accordingly, for example, in the position of the research tree or rank, for a better correspondence and more logical process. However, in the case of premium vehicles, such changes are difficult due to the players have already bought these vehicles for a specific price with a specific rank and reward multipliers. So, Gaussian, what you do, if you're going to change something or change the price or the reward rate of a vehicle, refund everyone their golden eagles. It's not hard, all right? It is not hard to do that. Um, I don't know why you would necessarily not do that, but changing a price of a vehicle, removing and changing their battle ratings is one thing, but moving and reducing prices of premiums that people have paid large amounts for, in some cases absurd amounts for, is really a strange move without properly refunding the community. It doesn't stop there. If that wasn't bad enough, they're now putting in a formula for calculating battle activity. And essentially, it's based on two factors, the number of points earned and the lifetime of a vehicle. So if you spend three minutes in a vehicle and you get a couple of kills and you get a cap point, well, that's fantastic. That earns you research and repair. Now they're changing it to a basically increasing the activity for not only just the game modes, but also changing the algorithm so it rewards players who play longer within the same battle and maintain their skill throughout the session. To me, this just says the following. You know those people who fly around in an aircraft and, and just do fuck all for most of the match? This basically is essentially an extension of people who will fly a bomber off the edge of the map and just fly around extending the match just so they can earn a bit more cash. This is probably what it's going to end up by doing. Let's not mention the fact that what people will use one vehicle in tanks, will rush out, get a cap, get a couple of kills and then leave a match and then continue that one vehicle play style. I understand what they're trying to do here. They're trying to stop people from doing the one vehicle uh, rush or the one vehicle does everything. But in hindsight, what they will end up by doing is alienating half the population of the, the user base by essentially compressing the amount of time uh, that you can get research or reward rate for. So you will earn less in a shorter period of time for those really short matches instead of having a really long match and any more within that long match. If the average player is playing for 40 minutes, then there's going to be much of a, I guess, a debate here regarding not only the balance, but matchmaker itself. Obviously, the whole battle ratings and repair cost as a whole. And essentially, 
these lower uh, and shorter sessions become a lot less uh, profitable. So as low tier and mid tier expands on what they can actually do, higher tier just gets at least screwed over because of the fast pace of gameplay. And this is a compounding effect. There is an algorithm in place which determines the, the act battle activity, your win rate, your kill to death ratio, how much you're earning, the research points, etc. Everything comes back. But they're not taking into consideration that once they do or push a vehicle like the Sagittario 2 to its utter limits, people stop playing that vehicle. It's like the G91YS all of a sudden, right? There was no data for that vehicle. Because they've changed it to an extremity, they haven't calculated or taken into effect the long length of the time needed for those changes that you change instantly in order to really sort of account for those battle rating increases. Is it necessary for you to change the repair cost or something when you've already upped the battle rating? No. Well, instead, we're getting this sort of compounding effect. So now the active activity base above 80% uh, will mean that you earn a little bit more. And there is a medium time and you can earn points at this time rather higher than the median. They're not necessarily specifying what that median is, whether it's 50%, whether it's 45, whether it's 60, or whether it's 65 like it was before. Essentially, you're giving a lot more players the ability to sit back and do nothing. And this could compound the way that the game plays. Unfortunately, it's an automated system. I mean, this not might not be a problem for those of us using premium accounts or premium vehicles, but if they continue to change the reward rate, and obviously mess with the earnings that can play an effect into game modes that people might not play. For example, a couple of months ago when the new changes to Naval came through, it basically pissed off a large majority of the player base to not really playing it. On top of it, the earnings in Naval wasn't exactly great unless you're playing Enduring Confrontation. You know, it, it, it this year has been constantly five steps backwards and one step forwards. I hate to say it, but it's kind of annoying. It really is. Last year, all of the content creators collectively banged on about repair costs, and we also talked about battle ratings, because that was a core component of the game's balance. Yet they didn't really care. They just snuck in patches, or they just changed their month and delayed that particular data, or whatever, to uh, the benefit of themselves. It's almost as if they don't necessarily play the game that rewards players is also the same algorithm that decides everything in the game. It's maintained by a couple of people, very capable people at this, at this as well. And I appreciate the honesty here in the language that they've used, and I appreciate the transparency with the formula, but it's only cause for concern. And I don't know what to do because a lot of it's overwhelming, right? You've got, oh, hang on, that's my steam. You've got this list of just vehicles here and the changes just are all in spreadsheet cost. You can at least uh, categorize it in what's changing and what's going up and what is being changed. There shouldn't be an algorithm like that in place. I understand it's hard to balance 1,700 vehicles. I get that. But do you even play some of these vehicles? <laughs> that's my big question to you. All right, that's enough for this particular video. The only positive out of this is there is a reduction in research costs for aviation. Uh, sometime after the introduction of the new vehicle rank, we will establish and reduce research costs from medium high rank vehicles of this vehicle type. Reduction of cost aviation will be due to the introduction of rank 7 will occur in the next economic update, which is scheduled for late August, early September. In other words, in the new patch. When we get the new patch for several new uh, vehicles. Now, for simulation, I can't necessarily talk. Uh, it's not necessarily something that I look at or play. If I want to go play a simulator game, I'll go do DCS or IL-2. So that doesn't necessarily bother me. He's an interesting and odd choice, especially when we're halfway through the year already and people are expecting more positive changes, not a disaster like Hot Trash and Iqua had a stroke, where we had several cases of just OP premiums just ruining uh, the, the game entirely. So it's going to be an interesting one to see how this really affects the longevity of the game as a whole. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Let me know what you think, and are there any other changes particularly that you find uh, interesting? <laughs> the repair costs for Naval have gone up again. You know, it is a free-to-play game. They are free to do anything they like, uh, and there's, there's no real change, essentially. But yeah, there you go. 
uh economy changes for 2021 <laughs> what an absolute mess and i'm sure i'll do a follow-up video where i explain a little bit more but uh, that's all i have to say why balance vehicles by repair costs it's just stupid